Patadakal, also called Patadakalu or Raktapura, is a complex of 7th and 8th century CE Hindu and Jain temples in northern Karnataka India. Located on the west bank of the Malaprabha River in Bagalakot district, this UNESCO World Heritage Site is 14 miles from Badami and about 6 miles from Ihole, both of which are historically significant centres of Chalukya monuments. The monument is a protected site under Indian law and is managed by the Archaeological Survey of India .UNESCO has described Patadakal as a harmonious blend of architectural forms from northern and southern India", and an illustration of eclectic art at its height. The Hindu temples are generally dedicated to Shiva, but elements of Vaishnavism and Shaktism theology and legends are also featured. The friezes in the Hindu temples display various Vedic and Puranic concepts, depict stories from the Ramayana, the Mahabharata, the Bhagavata Purana, as well as elements of other Hindu texts, such as the Panchatantra and the Kiritarjuniya. The Jain temple is only dedicated to a single jina. The most sophisticated temples, with complex friezes and a fusion of northern and southern styles, are found in the Papanatha and Virapaksha temples. The Virapaksha temple is an active house of Hindu worship. Topic. Location The Patadakal monuments are located in the Indian state of Karnataka, about 165 km 103 miles southeast of Belgaum, 265 km 165 miles northeast from Goa, 14 miles 23 km from Badami, via Karanataka State Highway SH-14, and about 6 miles 9 .7 km from Ihole, set midst sandstone mountains and Malprabha River Valley. In total, there are over 150 Hindu, Jain and Buddhist monuments, and archaeological discoveries, dating from the 4th to 10th century CE, in addition to pre-historic dolmens and cave paintings that are preserved at the Patadakal Badami Ihole site. The nearest airport to Patadakal is Sambra Belgam Airport IATA code, IXG, a three-hour drive to the west, which operates daily flights to Mumbai, Bangalore and Chennai. Access to the site by train is also possible via an Indian Railways service that stops at Badami on the Hubli Sola Pure Meter Gauge Line. History Patadakal, place of coronation, was considered a holy place, being where the Malprabha River turned northwards towards the Himalayas and the Kailasha Mountain. Uttaravahini. As its name implies, it was used during the Chalukya dynasty for coronation ceremonies, such as that of Vinayaditya in the 7th century CE. Other names this place was known by were Kisuvalal meaning, Valley of Red Soil, Raktapura meaning, City of Red, and Patata Kisuvalal meaning, Red Soil Valley for Coronation. The site, state's Archaeological Survey of India, is mentioned in texts by Srivijaya and is referred to by Ptolemy as, Petergal. In his geography, Patadakal became, along with nearby Ihole and Badami, a major cultural center and religious site for innovations in architecture and experimentation of ideas. The rule of the Gupta Empire during the 5th century brought about a period of political stability, during which Ihole became a locus of scholarship. The experimentations in architecture extended into Badami over the course of the next two centuries. This culture of learning encompassed Patadakal in the 7th century which became a nexus where ideas from northern and southern India fused. It was during this latter period that the Chalukya Empire constructed many of the temples in Ihole Badami Patadakal region. After the fall of the Chalukya Empire, the region was annexed by the Rashtrakuta Kingdom, who would rule over the region into the 10th century. In the 11th century, and into the 12th century, the region came under the rule of the late Chalukyas Western Chalukya Empire, Chalukyas of Kalyani, an offshoot of the early Chalukya Empire. Although the area was not a capital region, nor in proximity to one, numerous sources such as inscriptions, contemporaneous texts and the architectural style indicate that, from the 9th to 12th centuries, new Hindu, Jain and Buddhist temples and monasteries continued to be built in the Patadakal region. Historian George Mitchell attributes this to the presence of a substantial population and its burgeoning wealth. Throughout the 13th century, Patadakal, the Malprabha Valley, as well as much of the nearby Deccan region, was subject to raids and plunder by the Delhi Sultanate armies that devastated the region. This period ended with the rise of the Hindu Vijayanagara Empire. 
It was responsible for the construction of forts for the protection of the monuments, as evidenced by inscriptions in the fort at Badami. Patadakal was a part of the border region that witnessed wars between Vijayanagara and the Sultanates to its north. Following the collapse of Vijayanagara Empire in 1565, Patadakal was annexed by the Sultanate of Bijapur, which was ruled by the Adil Shahi dynasty. In the late 17th century, the Mughal Empire, under Aurangzeb, gained control of Patadakal from the Sultanate. After the collapse of Mughal Empire, Patadakal came under the control of the Maratha Empire. It later changed hands, yet again, when Haider Ali and Tipu Sultan wrested control of it in late 18th century but would lose it when the British defeated Tipu Sultan and annexed the region. The monuments at Patadakal are evidence of the existence, and the history, of interaction between the early northern and southern styles of Hindu arts. According to T. Richard Blurton, the history of temple arts in northern India is unclear as the region was repeatedly sacked by invaders from Central Asia, particularly during the Muslim incursions from the 11th century onward. The subsequent, "...warfare has greatly reduced the quantity of surviving examples." The Patadakal monuments completed in 7th and 8th century are among the earliest surviving examples of these early religious arts and ideas. Description Site layout There are ten major temples at Patadakal, nine Hindu and one Jain, along with numerous small shrines and plinths. Eight of the major temples are clustered together, a ninth one about half a kilometer south of this cluster, and the tenth, a Jain temple, located about a kilometer to the west of the main cluster. The Hindu temples are all connected by a walkway, while the Jain temple has road access. <laughs> <laughs> Style The Patadakal monuments reflect a fusion of two major Indian architectural styles, one from North India and the other from South India Four temples were built in the Chalukya Dravida style, four in the Nagara style of Northern India, while the Papanatha temple is a fusion of the two. The nine Hindu temples are all dedicated to Shiva, and are on the banks of Malaprabha River. The oldest of these temples is Sangamishwara, which was built during the reign of Vijayaditya Satishraya, between 697 and 733 CE. The largest of these temples in Patadakal is the Virapaksha Temple, which was built between 740 and 745 CE. The last temple built in the group of monuments is the Jain Temple, known locally as the Jain Narayana Temple, which was likely built in the 9th century during the reign of Krishna II of Rashtrakutas. Its style is patterned on the lines of the Kailasanatha temple at Kanchipuram. Kadasadeshwara temple A relatively small temple, the Archaeological Survey of India has dated it to around the mid-7th century CE, but George Mitchell dates it to the early 8th century. The temple faces east and is built around a square Garba Griha sacrum sanctum. It houses a linga on a pitha platform, and the Nandi bull faces it from outside. There is a mandapa around the sacrum center. Another mandapa provides a circumambulation path in an expanded axial layout. Much of the temple has been eroded or was damaged in the following centuries. The shakara spire is a northern Nagara style Rekanagara with a Sukhanasa projection on the east. The Sukhanasa has a damaged Nataraja accompanied by Parvati. The outer walls of the Kata Sideshwara Sanctum feature images of Ardhanarishvara half Shiva, half Parvati on its north, Harihara half Shiva, half Vishnu to its west and Lakalisha to the south. Mounted on a lintel at the sanctum entrance is Shiva and Parvati flanked by Brahma and Vishnu on either side. The steps at the sanctum entrance are flanked by the river goddesses Ganga and Yamuna, with attendants. Jambulingeshwara Temple Another small temple, the Jambulingeshwara Temple, also called the Jambulinga Temple, is variously estimated by Asi and Mitchell to have been complete between mid-7th and early 8th century, respectively. The temple is built around a square Garba Griha sacrum sanctum, whose outer walls feature intricate devakishtha lintled niches with decorated frames with hamsa and mythical makaras. 
Inside the frames are images of Vishnu on its north, Surya sun god, to its west and Lakalisha to the south. The temple also experiments with the idea of projecting Sukhanasa from the Shakara in front, over the Mandapa. The temple still faces east, greeting the sunrise. The Nandi too is provided with a raised platform which is in ruins and the Nandi image shows signs of erosion. The dancing Shiva Nataraja with Parvati and Nandi by his side on the frontal arch Sukhanasa is better preserved. The style of the temple is northern Rekha Nagara with a curvilinear profile of squares diminishing as they rise towards the sky. The Amalaka and Kalasha of the northern style, however, are damaged and not in place. The entrance of the Jambulingeshwara Mandapa is decorated with three shakas, each with Purnakumbas below their capitals. A swan-themed frieze covers the passageway with the faint remains of the carvings of swans, kudas and salas. <laughs> Galaganatha Temple The Galaganatha Temple lies to the east of the Jambulingeshwara Temple. Unlike the previous two temples, Asi estimates this temple to be from the mid-8th century, whereas Mitchell states that it is likely from late 7th century. The temple is a northern Rekha Nagara style with a linga, and a vestibule within the temple sanctum Outside the temple is a seated nandi that faces the sanctum. The sanctum has a covered circumambulatory path patha, indicating that this Hindu tradition was well established by 7th to 8th century. Various mandapas exist in this temple, such as a social or community hall Sabha mandapa, used for ceremonial functions, and a mukha mandapa, of which only the foundation remains. The entrance to the mandapa is flanked by the river goddesses Ganga and Yamuna. The Galagatha temple is mostly in ruins, except for the southern part which contains a carved slab showing an eight-armed Shiva killing the demon Indaka, while wearing a garland of skulls as a Yanopavita sacred thread across the chest. According to Mitchell, the Galaganatha temple is notable for being almost an exact copy of the Svarga Brahma temple of Alampur in Andhra Pradesh, a temple that is dated to 689 CE. Given both Alampur and Patadakal were a part of the Badami Shalukya kingdom, an exchange of ideas is likely. The basement of the eastern moulding is notable for depicting friezes of Panchatantra fables, such as that of the mischievous monkey and the fable of two-headed bird. Chandrashakara <laughs> Temple Chandrashakara Temple is a small east-facing temple without a tower. It is situated on the south side of the Galaganatha temple. This temple has been dated by Mitchell to the late 9th or early 10th century, whereas the Asi dates it to the mid 8th century. The temple has a Garbha Griha with a Shiva Linga and a closed hall. A Nandi sits on a platform to the east facing the Linga. It is laid out within a space 33.33 feet in length and 17.33 in breadth, on an Adishthana platform based on certain design rules in Hindu texts. Detailed pilasters, yet lacking in ornamentation, decorate the exterior walls of the temple. There is a Devakastha niche in the walls on either side of the Chandrashakara temple sanctum. The temple lacks a lintel, but features a Devarapala guardian on each side of the entrance. The door frames are carved with shakas. Topic: <laughs> Sangamishwara Temple. Sangamishwara Temple, also called the Vijayeshvara Temple, is a large, Dravida-style east-facing temple located on the south side of the Chandrashakara Temple. Inscriptions at the temple, and other evidence, date it to between 720 CE and 733 CE. The death of its patron king, Vijayaditya, in 734 CE resulted in the temple being left unfinished, although work continued intermittently in later centuries. During the Badami Shalukya reign, between 543 to 757 CE, other important Sangamishwara temples were built, such as the one at Kudaveli. In modern times, this temple was relocated to Alampur, after extensive restoration work. The inscriptions found in this and other temples mention sponsor names from different centuries, including those of Hindu queens, suggesting they actively supported the temple architecture and arts. Although the temple is not the largest among those at Patadakal it is nonetheless of imposing proportions. The temple has a square layout, with an east-facing sanctum. The sanctum, surrounded by a covered Pradakshina patha circumambulatory path lit by three carved windows. Inside the sanctum is a Shiva Linga. 
In front of the sanctum is a vestibule that is flanked on each side by smaller shrines. These shrines once contained carvings of Ganesha and Durga, but the carvings have since gone missing. Further east of the hall is a seated Nandi. Past the vestibule is a mandapa within which are sixteen massive pillars set in groups of four, which may have been added after construction of the temple was completed. The Vimana superstructure above the temple and the outer walls of the temple are well preserved. The Vimana is a two tiered structure, crowned with a square Kuta Sikara and Kalasha. The temple walls contain many Devakastha niches carved with images of Vishnu and Shiva, some of which are in various stages of completion. The temple is built on a raised molded base, with decorative friezes of elephants, yali and makara mythical creatures. Above the kapoda eaves are detailed friezes of ganas playful dwarfs, who are portrayed as if they are struggling to hold the weight of the temple structure. The parapet displays hara various kinds of string in Hindu temple texts of various styles, including karnakutas square, and salas oblong, which flow with the design below them and are decorated with kudas. Shaivism, Vaishnavism and Shaktism themes are presented in the carvings at the temple. The Shaiva iconography include a dancing Nataraja, Ardhanarishvara half Shiva, half Parvati as essential halves of each other, Shiva with Bringi, Shiva spearing the demon Indaka, and the Yogi, Lakalisha. The Vaishnava iconography includes avatars of Vishnu such as Varaha lifting goddess earth Budevi, excavations into the foundations of its ruined hall, in 1969 and 1971, revealed the archaeologically significant discovery of a brick temple structure beneath the hall. This discovery led to the proposal that Sangamishwara had been built over an older temple, possibly dating to the 3rd century CE. Kashi Vishwanatha Temple Also known as Kashi Vishweswara, the Kashi Vishwanatha Temple is another of the smaller temples at Patadakal. The temple has been variously dated to the late 7th century, early 8th century, or the mid 8th century. Much like the other temples, the core of the Kashi Vishwanatha Temple is the square Garbha Griha, sanctum, which houses a linga. To the east of the Garbha Griha is the molded platform of a Nandi Mandapa, featuring the image of a seated Nandi. The temple also features a pranala, a stone structure used to drain out water used during devotional activities, and an antarala, or foyer, connecting to a Mandapa with a ruined entrance porch. The river goddesses Ganga and Yamuna are still visible at the entrance to the Mandapa. The temple sits on a raised platform, with five layers of mouldings, decorated with 8th-century carvings of horses, elephants, lions, peacocks and flowery vine designs. The wall surfaces have pilaster pairs supporting Chaitya-style arches. The entrance door features a Shaiva Devarapala guardian on each side. Sculptures of Ardhanaraswara half Shiva, half Parvati and Likalisha are carved into the northern wall of the temple Mandapa, but these have been damaged and defaced. The kapoda cornice are decorated with motifs and carved with ganas playful dwarfs carrying garlands. Brackets show flying couples and kurtimakas. The superstructure, displaying a well-developed North Indian Rekha Nagara style, is a rising five-stage projection of centered squares with a complex pattern of interlocking gavakshas, but the amalaka and kalasha are now missing. The Sukhanasa, mounted on a spire in front of the temple, is of a dancing Uma Maheswara Parvati Shiva set inside a Chaitya arch. Inside the temple are pillars and pilasters intricately carved with friezes depicting the Bhagavata Purana Vaishnavism, the Shiva Purana Shaivism, and the Ramayana. One frieze shows the demon Ravana lifting Mount Kailasha, others show the playful pranks of Krishna, while another narrates the Kalyansandarmurti marriage of Shiva and Parvati. One relief in particular shows Shiva coming out of the cylindrical linga. The Mandapa ceiling has carvings of Shiva, Nandi and Parvati holding Kartikya. This image is concentrically surrounded by the Ashta Dikpala's eight directional guardians. <laughs> Malakarjuna Temple Malakarjuna Temple, also called the Trelakaswara Maha Sela Prasada in a local inscription, is a mid-8th century Shiva temple sponsored by Queen Trelakyamahadevi. It is located south of the Kashi Vishwanatha Temple, southwest of the Sangameswara Temple and in close proximity to Virapaksha. The temple was built about the same time as the Virapaksha Temple, with a similar design and layout, but is somewhat smaller and has a few important differences. The temple reflects a fully developed South Indian Vimana-style architecture. 
Its garbha griya sanctum has a Shiva linga, and features a circumambulatory path patha. In front of the sanctum is an antechamber antarala with small shrines for Durga as Mahishashuramardini killing the buffalo demon and another for Ganesha on each side, both currently empty. A Nandi mandapa is included in the temple wherein Nandi faces the sanctum. Access to the sanctum is through a pillared Sabha Mandapa community hall with entrance porches, enclosures prakara, and a gateway pratali. The temple, though similar to the Virapaksha temple, experiments with new architectural ideas that makes it distinct. The depiction of a dancing Shiva, as Nataraja, in the Malakarjuna temple is set in the shallow arch of the Sukhanasa. As another example, the topmost story of the Shakara superstructure of this temple lacks hara elements threads, while its roof is hemispherical unlike the square roof of the Virapaksha temple, the use of stone carvings for storytelling is prevalent throughout the temple. The legends of Hindu epics and the Puranas are depicted on the temple pillars in the community hall. These stories span all major traditions within Hinduism, including Shaivism, Vaishnavism and Shaktism. The Rasa Lila of Krishna, whose stories are found in the Bhagavata Purana, are shown on friezes as are Hindu fables from the Panchatantra. Like other Hindu temples, the friezes of the Malakarjuna temple show Kama and Mathuna scenes of amorous couples. In other places, Artha scenes such as a worker walking with an elephant carrying a log and single women with different emotional expressions are carved into stone. One of these women carries an 8th century musical instrument. Topic. Virapaksha Temple The Virapaksha Temple, located to the immediate south of the Malakarjuna Temple, is the largest and most sophisticated of the monuments at Patadakal. In inscriptions, it is referred to as Sri Lokeshvara Mahasila Prasada, after its sponsor Queen Lakmahadevi, and is dated to about 740 CE. The temple is notable for its range, and quality, of construction exemplifying a well-developed Dravidian architectural style, as well as the inscribed names of the artists beneath the panels they worked on, as is common with other temples at Patadakal. The Virapaksha temple was built facing east-centered around a square Garbha Griya sanctum, with a Shiva Linga, surrounded by a covered circumambulatory path Pradakshina Patha. In front of the sanctum is an antarala with two small shrines within which are facing images of Ganesha and Parvati, in her Durga aspect as Mahishashuramardini killing the buffalo demon. The external Nandi pavilion is aligned on an east-west axis, as are the mandapa and antechamber. The temple site forms a rectangle consisting of fused squares bounded by walls, which are decorated with carvings. Within the compound are smaller shrines, of which there were once 32, based on the foundation footprint layout, but most have since been lost. The entrance leads to a mandapa with 18 columns 4 to 5 aisle 5 minus 4, with a 4 by 4 set forming the inner mandapa and two leading to the darshana space. The tower above the sanctum is a three-story pyramidal structure, with each story bearing motifs that reflect those in the sanctum below. However, for clarity of composition, the artisans had simplified the themes in the pilastered projections and intricate carvings. The third story is the simplest, having only parapet kudas, a kuda roof with each face decorated with kudas, a structure common in later Dravidian architecture Hindu temples. A kalasha-like pot, found in festivals, social ceremonies and personal rituals such as weddings, crowns the temple. The top of this pot is 17.5 meters 57 feet above the temple pavement, the highest for any pre-9th century South Indian temple. The Sukhanasa on the tower is large, exceeding half the height of the superstructure, to aid visibility from a distance. The sanctum walls, and also those of the nearby mandapa space, are decorated with intricately detailed carvings. These carvings depict images of Shaivism, Vaishnavism, and Shaktism deities, and themes, such as Narasimha and Varaha Vaishavism, Bhairava and Nataraja Shaivism, Harahara half Shiva half Vishnu, Lakulisa Shaivism, Brahma, Durga, Saraswati, Lakshmi, and others. According to George Mitchell, the carvings on the walls and porch of the Virapaksha temple exterior are vehicles for diverse sculptural compositions, by far the most numerous found on any early Shalukya monument." Other than Hindu gods and goddesses, numerous panels show depict people either as couples, in courtship and mithuna, or as individuals wearing jewellery or carrying work implements. 
The temple has numerous friezes spanning a variety of topics such as, for example, two men wrestling, Rishi with Vishnu, Rishi with Shiva, Vishnu rescuing Gajendra elephant trapped by a crocodile in a lotus pond, scenes of hermitages, and sadhus seated in meditative yoga posture. Vedic deities such as Surya riding the chariot with Aruna, Indra on elephant and others are carved in stone. A few depict scenes from the Ramayana such as those involving Golden Deer, Hanuman, Sugrava, Vali, Ravana and Jatayu Bird, Sita being abducted, the struggles of Rama and Lakshmana. Other friezes show scenes from the Mahabharata, Krishna's playful life story in the Bhagavata Purana and the Harivamsa as well as fables from the Panchatantra and other Hindu texts. The temple contains historically significant inscriptions that provide hints about the society and culture of 8th century India. For example, one inscription mentions a grant to the musicians of the temple by the queen. The famous Kailasha temple at Ellora Caves was modeled after this temple, although the Virapaksha temple was itself modeled after the Kailasanatha temple at Kanchipuram. Topic: <laughs> Papanatha Temple. The Papanatha temple is situated apart from the main cluster of eight monuments. It is about half kilometer to the south of Virapaksha and has been dated towards the end of the early Chalukya rule period, approximately mid-8th century. The temple is noted for its novel mixture of Dravida, and Nagara, Hindu temple styles. The unusual layout of the temple is possibly due to its construction, which occurred in three stages, but there is a lack of epigraphical evidence to support this hypothesis. Its architectural and sculptural details do show a consistent and unified theme, indicative of a plan. The temple is longer, incorporating two interconnected mandapas, one with 16 pillars and another with four pillars. The decorations, parapets and some parts of the layout are Dravida in style, while the tower and pilastered niches are of the Nagara style. Like the other temples, the Papanatha temple faces east towards the sunrise and has a Shiva Linga in its Garbha Griya sanctum, except there is no Nandi mandapa. Instead, there is an image of Nandi housed in the Sabha mandapa facing the sanctum. The temple walls are notable for the carved deities and themes of Shaivism and Vaishnavism. Durga is depicted in one of the niches. Intricately carved panels are displayed on the walls, depicting legends such as the Ramayana and excerpts of the Kiritarjuniya. The center of the ceiling is decorated with an elaborate Shiva Nataraja, while other ceiling slabs show Vishnu. One panel shows him in a reclining Ananasayana pose. Outside, in the mandapas, are images of single women and couples, in courtship and different stages of Mithuna. Many panels show musicians with different types of musical instruments. <laughs> Jain Narayana Temple The Jaina Temple at Patadakal was built during the 9th century, possibly with sponsorship from the Rashtrakuta King Krishna II or the Kalyani Shalukas. Unlike the other nine temples, the Narayana temple lacks Hindu deities and intricate panels of the other nine, but instead has a statue of Ajina carved into the north side Kapota Eve. Like the Hindu temples, this temple also features a square sanctum, a circumambulatory path, an antechamber, a mandapa and a porch. The mandapa is divided into seven bays at the north and south walls, with narrow niches containing seated jinas. The bays are in the North Indian style, and the tower story has a carved square shikara. The mandapa has a row of lathe turned sandstone pillars. The kakshasana are decorated with the figures of dancers, pernagata, nidis, vialas, but some of the artwork is only partially finished. The entrance features carvings of a life sized elephant torso with riders. According to Adam Hardy, the niches of this Jain temple mandapa may have previously featured images. The Archaeological Survey of India has conducted excavations at the site, yielding evidence of an older temple and Jaina presence. According to the Asi, the excavations uncovered the remains of a large temple complex built in bricks and also a beautiful sculpture of Tirthankara standing in Sama Banga indicating the existence of a temple, probably belonging to the pre or beginning of the early Shalukyan rule. Other monuments and inscriptions A number of inscriptions in the Old Kannada language have been found at Patadakal, notably in the Virapaksha, Sangamishwara and Papanatha temples. 
These inscriptions are an important source of information regarding the grants made by King Vikramaditya, and Vijayaditya, various queens, and others, for the construction and operation of the temple. They have also provided valuable insight into the evolution of various written Indian scripts. As an example, one particular 8th century column is inscribed in two Sanskrit scripts, the Northern Indian Siddhamatrika script and the Southern Indian Proto Kannada Telugu script. Other notable monuments at Patadakal include a monolithic stone pillar bearing numerous inscriptions, the Naganatha Temple, the Mahakuteshwara Temple, which also bear numerous inscriptions, as well as several small shrines dedicated to Shiva. Near the Virapaksha, Sangamishwara and Malakarjuna temples is a Shaiva stone pillar, featuring a trident emblem. The pillar bears inscriptions stating it was erected by Jnana Shivacharya from Muragathanikahara, located on the north bank of the Ganges, and that he had gifted a parcel of land to the Vijayeshwara. In 2008, Upinder Singh wrote that S. Venkatesheya, a senior archaeologist with the Asi had located the quarry where the stones were sourced some five kilometres away from the Patadakal. The site is notable for sketches of Shiva, Nandi, Durga, Ganesh, Trident, Peacock, Swastika, symbols and inscriptions. Some of these may be emblems of guilds that quarried and supplied the stones for temples. Significance <inaudible> 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 According to art historian Kathleen Cummings, the monuments at Patadakal are a historically significant example of religion, society and culture, particularly Hindu and Jain, in the Deccan region and is an expression of Hindu kingship and religious worldview of 8th century India. She writes that the artisans express the conflicting concepts of dharma duty, virtue, righteousness, and moksha liberation in Hindu theology, particularly Pashapada Shaivism. Furthermore, she states that the significance lies not just within individual images but also in their relative location and sequence as well how it expresses the historic tension in Hindu religious tradition between the stately life of the householder and the life of the renouncer monk, the expression of dharma, particularly Raja Dharma royal authority and duty as exemplified by Rama, and moksha are seen throughout the various temples at Patadakal. The former is depicted in various friezes using examples of the life story of Rama from the Ramayana, while the latter is expressed with images of Lakalisha, Nataraja, Yoga, and numerous ascetics. Other imagery that is particularly prevalent at Patadakal is that between Purusha and Prakriti, the soul and the matter, the masculine and the feminine, the temples at Patadakal are symbolic of the Shalukya inclination towards integration, and experimentation, resulting in a merging of the northern and southern Indian architectural styles. This is particularly evident when the architecture at Patadakal, Ihole and Badami are viewed together. Ihole, in the 5th century, served as the incubator for the concepts that would lead to this integration of styles. These concepts were further refined in Badami during the 6th and 7th centuries. The culmination of this is, as described by UNESCO, the apogee of an eclectic art which, in the 7th and 8th centuries, achieved a harmonious blend of architectural forms from the north and south of India. Early medieval era music and arts Among the sculptures at Patadakal is one of a long neck lute dated to the 10th century. The site also shows friezes with more conventional musical instruments, but the long neck lute suggests there was a tradition of musicians innovating with new instrument designs. Another example are the 7th century stick zithers found carved in the bas relief at Mahabalipuram in Tamil Nadu. See also Ihole Alampur Group of Temples, Andhra Pradesh Badami Cave Temples Alora Caves Gajendragad Lakundi List of State Protected Monuments in Karnataka Mahadeva Temple Atagi Mahakuta Group of Temples Sirpur Group of Monuments Sudi equals equals notes